Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to go into now a simple form, one point perspective interior, and we're going to put characters inside of it. So we're going to do, um, for this one, the Star Wars compactor uh, scene. Uh, Star Wars, I think, A New Hope. So um, what I've got here is a thumbnail sketch page of ideas I thought about how I wanted to compose the design of the scene that we're going to do. And um, these are all in, in quick sketch one point. So everything that we were going to be doing, I kind of sketched out here and got a, a, got a clear idea of what I wanted to show and how I wanted to show with simple one point perspective. And I final, got finalized down in through here with our scene. So the idea is to put our characters, Chewbacca, Leia, Luke, and Han inside the trash compactor and it's closing in on them, compacting pretty tightly in on them. Because there's going to be water in the bottom of the, uh, the compactor like there was in the movie and then there will be trash and garbage uh, as well. So that, that will be that. And so I landed on this one and now we're going to take this idea, we're going to enlarge it and make it more um, uh, realized in full one point We'll do just a little bit of measuring and scaling, but not a whole lot. We'll keep it very fresh, relatively loose, uh, like designers and entertainment designers and draftsmen uh, generally do. Um, but yet we're going to be using one nice, clear one-point perspective to give us a very low viewpoint, keep our eye level low so we're looking up and we can see quite a bit of the structure closing in and we're going to have our eye will be right about at the water level. Okay, so I went from this to the next step that we're gonna do is I went ahead and made a maquette for us so that we now can complete. So this is what we're gonna be doing, recreating this as close as I can uh, to our, our structure. So we'll have a nice one point interior. We'll have these compactor teeth that will fit together, lock in together when it closes and you know crushes garbage and whatnot. And then um, we'll have a little uh, escape door they had and we'll build our ceiling up and our walls. And then we'll put in reference points for the height of our figures as they come forward in space, they come to, uh, towards us. We can figure that out. So that's what's happening. Okay, so I'll put this to the side and I can refer to it or for, uh, show you and refer back to it if we, if we need. Okay, so materials for this drawing. I've got a nice big sheet of white paper. I've got graphite. I've got my trusty uh, see-through ruler. I've got a triangle if I need it, and probably just one. Just <clears throat> excuse me, just one eraser there uh, to uh, work with. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. The picture plane that I'm going to be working with will be 12 inches by 17 inches. So I'm going to put that down at the top of my paper here. So the the actual picture plane we're looking through are borders. 12 inches by 17 inches. This 18 inch ruler. So come down to 18 there for 17. And across here. So I don't know in, in the metric system what that is. You'll have to, the rest of the world, unfortunately. The United States, we still did not learn the metric system, unfortunately. So I never did as a child. Apologies. All right, so 12 inches by 17 inches. Okay, there we go. So 12 here across and then 17 wide and through here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is put our horizon line, our eye level, and also our water level for our structure at four inches up from the bottom of the picture plane. One, two, three, Four inches there, and if you want to put it over here, you can. One, two, three, four inches there, and then draw a nice horizon line connecting this two and through here. And I'll draw it out nice and nice and wide over here so we can see that. So that's four inches. That's where our eye level will be, and that's where our horizon line will be. So I'll put eye level here, EL, horizon line, and then also water the water level so that's where it will be at and this is going to be about four feet high too as well so that's going to be quite high <clears throat> most of our characters in the are five foot under six foot except for Chewbacca 
Okay, so we, the next thing we want to do is find our, our center of vision. And it's about six inches in, so if it's 12 across, roughly. So we'll put the vanishing point VP right there in the middle, so you see that. And then I want a nice center line all the way up from that point that splits the, the picture plane in two. So that's your center of vision. Remember the four applications that we always carry with us. I'll be repeating it until, <clears throat> excuse me, I get to, <clears throat> oh goodness, till I get to a formal perspective. <clears throat> and that will be coming up after we do our simple form in one and two and three point. Remember your four applications. They are the, your center of vision, your horizon line, or excuse me, your eye level, cone of vision, okay, and your station point. Things to kind of keep in your mind, the back of your head as we go forward. All right, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that is our center line and our eye level. Now the next thing I want to do is set in the bottom part of the back of the wall. So we want to set this part in our composition and get this nice rectangular back part of our wall. So we're going to do that. Well, I'm going to put it just arbitrarily down a little bit. Maybe right in here looks, looks like where I had it. And then we're going to put, just going to do a mark a line, nice and light. Okay, and then I want it even. I'm going to make it even. So about two, two and a half inches on both sides. One, two and a half seems pretty good right in through there. Okay, so it's two and a half inches on both sides here and here. Then I'm going to strike a line up. Mark can mark a line up to bring back, to bring up our wall in our composition. So our back wall, the compactor or the room. And by the way, we're just drawing a big, large rectangular cube inside out as well. Okay, I'll bring it up a little bit further. And then I'm going to arbitrarily cut it off. It looks pretty interesting, maybe about right here. It almost is equal on both, but not quite. I think it's a little bit higher at the top. And that, that should work for us. There to there, so we're good to go. I'll try to keep my head out of the way. Sometimes I have to have it there so I can see. But I'll move it so you can see it as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got our back wall. Now we need to project depth to get <clears throat> the depth of our room <clears throat> going back to the vanishing point or going out from it. So from the vanishing point, we'll draw a convergence line, line it up with a corner of our room, strike it out till it hits the corner and let it go out of the picture plane. Wherever it goes out is wherever it goes out. Mark up and through here, okay, and we'll do the same thing now down below the vanishing point here and up and out. And since we made it equal, it should it should strike out of the picture plane about equal. Yeah, it well, should be on all of them, so that worked out decently. Okay, here's where they hit out here, and here's where they hit out here. Now, you can see where my corner just shows up in the composition. If yours doesn't, if it comes out here a little bit, if it comes in up here, that's okay too. All right. So the next thing we want to get now is this thickness of our room in through here, of our uh, teeth that are coming in. So we want to bring this thickness in. It says, it's as if we're slicing this scene off and so we can see through the compactor even though they, they would not be able to get around here. So that's the first thing we want to see. So that's the power of film in movies. <clears throat> so we want to bring from these two points that I marked, I'm just going to bring a light straight line out a little bit. And I think I'll, I'll make each one of them about an inch. So we'll bring them out an inch from there. This is just a wall thickness now. So an inch here and an inch there. Okay. Now we need to go and I'll make it darker here and here. Okay. Now we need to go back to the vanishing point. So thumb those points back to strike through, draw through where they mark the end of the wall there. Make a mark. Same thing on the other side come through there, mark through, make a mark there. Now we can bring that point all the way up to the top of the wall here. Make it all the way up nice and light, right in through there. Do the same thing up, right in through 
there looks pretty good. And then we can go out of the composition from the vanishing point, come up through, line up with the vanishing point and out, line up with the vanishing point to that back corner of that thickness of the wall and out that way. Now we're good to go. Okay, so now we're cooking with gas. All right. So now we can start building our teeth, the compactor teeth of our composition. So we want to start building these structures coming down. And the good news is they look complicated, but we're actually just going to start out by drawing, I'll do it over here, you can see it in the camera, just by drawing flat shapes like so coming in and then repeating this pattern over and over again. I'll show you what I mean. Okay? Alright, so lay this back over here. Alright, so now from our back wall, actually I should bring my, this, one more thing we need to do. I mess, I, uh, we need one more thing we need, sorry about that. So, we need to bring from our back wall, we need to bring, or we made that mark vertical up here, we need to make this vertical here, and here to make that work out for us. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now we're really cooking. Okay, now, so, <clears throat> From along this back wall here, this, this extra protrusion where it touches the very back here, touches along here and over, that's where we're going to start our links. That's where we're going to start putting our forms. Now we could either do that or we could put it out here if we want. Maybe it's even a better idea to put it along this line a little bit in through here. However, if we did, we a couple things. If you did it out here, if you did it along this line and you projected back up here, it would, you'd have to draw out through here. So maybe, maybe it's easier if I put it along these lines for you, but we won't have the compactor go all the way, the teeth go all the way up. There might be a part where um, we wouldn't need that since this is going to be four, about 20, 25 feet high. So I think it would be easier to make a starting point here. So yeah, let's do that. So let's put a starting point. Uh, just roughly here, this is arbitrary design. You're a designer. We're being an illustrator and a designer. We're not being an engineer. Right in through here. Draw a straight line over, right in through there. That's where we're gonna, we're gonna start our pattern. All right, so now remember our pattern is flat, so we don't have to worry about perspective for now. So I'm gonna draw, start drawing my pattern out here. And it's just an arbitrary angle where I want it. Bring it out there. Then I'm gonna come over an inch with a horizontal line here. Then I'm going to come with a vertical line downward. That's going to be one inch and a half. Okay. Then I'm going to bring a diagonal to this point here. And I'm going to freehand it and say, I like that. So I'm going to bring that over to there. And I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to repeat this entire process. Now, if I want to get this measurement exactly, what I can do is make demarcate a structure line lightly all the way down. Same thing here, all the way down to help me get my angles correct. So I'm going to bring this angle downward now to here, okay, right to there. <clears throat> then we're going to go an inch over, right? Inch over, and then inch and a half down, one and a half. And then we're going to bring this angle over to here. How do I know? I could measure all this if I want. Yeah, just guesstimate. Estimate how you want that right there. Now we've got two. So let's do the same thing. Let's guess again. About right there. <clears throat> if you screw up, just start over. Recorrect until you get it right. Slow me down or stop me. <clears throat> and I'll keep going. So that was an inch. This is an inch and a half. And now that angle all the way down. So I'll kind of get a freehand feel for it. And then we'll mark it, bring it over, okay? So we've got maybe one, one and a half to do. All right, so bring down that same, same angle to right there, okay? Inch over to there, bingo. Come down, inch and a half, inch and a half. Bring this over. Let's bring our angle over, see if we can kind of keep it there, not too bad. That just happened to line up with that wall. I'll bring it in a little bit so it doesn't, for congruency's sake. And I'll leave off there. 
That would be perfect right in through there. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four gigantic compactor teeth. Now we want to get this pattern over on this side, but we want to do it in the opposite way so they fit together and they would crush whatever it is that they're crunching. In this case, our heroes, which we don't want. All right, so we're going to start from this point, right? Okay, now I need a little extra space out through here for the thickness of my wall because we'll probably have to come in. I could build out a little more if I wanted to. And maybe I, maybe I should do that. I could do that a little bit if I wanted, but I'd have to bring this out. I don't want to confuse you. So we're going to have to use some negative space or extra picture plane space over here, which will be fine. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start from this point, but to help us out, we can actually bring over some measurements from the other side. Draw a line through this point here, this point here, this corner here. Keep, them, keep your construction lines, your convergence lines really light. I've got to make mine a little darker so you can see it. I boost up the contrast on these videos when I edit them so that you can see them a little bit better right through there, right through there, right through here. We're good to go right through here. Okay, and you can get the idea I'm doing this all the way down to get a nice feel for what's going on here. Here, bringing out my measurements, and then the last one down in through here. So now we're good to go, okay? So we're going to start with this point. Now, this needs to fit into this component, right? Coming in to fit. So this is going to mimic this like so, right? So I'll bring my angle over a little bit more to there, okay? Then we come in an inch here, right? Darker there, lighter there. Then we come down an inch and a half. So we'll probably never see these in our composition. Inch and a half, okay, to there. Then we bring that diagonal right over, and it meets up right there. There's our angle. So we already have our angle done for us. That's nice. Okay, now we can bring this measurement, nice horizontal line, all the way down, nice and light to help us line up everything. Okay, then we can bring our angle here to there, then an inch over, remember that, an inch to there. We could bring this down to help us also too, as well. Then we come down an inch and a half, which is already done for us, then we bring our angle over to here. So from this point to that point, I know I'm going fast, you could slow me down. There's our next reference point to bring over. Inch over, it's already done for us. Through there, we go down an inch and a half, which is already done for us. There. Diagonal we want to come over, which is already, let's see, make sure I get it right. So this one here, you got to be a detective when you're working with perspective, because you want to make sure you get it right. That's a silly joke that I learned a long time ago. Okay, here's our point, here's our point here. There we go. Inch over. There we go. And down, right there. And our last angle right here. Look at that. So, now we've got teeth. If you don't have any teeth, you've got teeth now. Congratulations. No more dentures for you. All right, so <clears throat> we have our compactor teeth all set in, so we're good to go. Now we need to project depth, and that can get fun. And I need to make this one come across all the way. That needs to come over and through. Okay, like so, because that's going to lock into that one. Okay, now let me bring my diagram back over. So now what we're going to be doing is projecting the depth now back to the vanishing point and they'll lock into that back wall. So that's the next step. This is probably the hardest step, but I think the most fun step. It gives you that drama that I think is, is a lot of fun to, to work with. And you want to look at and, um, and, and really pay attention to and understand. I think you'll, you'll like it quite a bit. Okay. All right, so here we go. Now let's start, let's start on this side. And we want to strike, to make sure we strike far enough or draw far enough with our line work that we draw through that 
that back, that thickness of our back line. So we don't see a line through there. We won't need it. We will see one through here. So back to the vanishing point with our convergence line. Back to the vanishing point with our convergence line. We don't see anything come through there. We see it back to the vanishing points. Okay, back to the vanishing point there. We see a little bit of merging over here to here, line up, back to the vanishing point. I sound like a broken record. That's for a reason. Back to the, back to the vanishing point there. And then we go here. Okay, and then we see a little sliver here. That's gonna be fun. That's what perspective does for us. Here, it looks like a lot of lines. Stay with me, hang on with me, and we'll get it, we'll work it out. I promise. And if I mess it up, it's okay too. We all can mess it up, no big deal. And we strike from here, our ending point there, and we're good to go. And we've already got that one. Okay, let's do the other side too. Let's go ahead and get all this done. Now we want to make sure that we, when we're working with our convergence lines, draw your convergence lines. We'll go, we got to go past this point, and you don't have to draw so far like I did through here, just to save us some some time and some space. Okay. All right. So from these points, we go back to the vanishing point here. Whoops. Let me get tighten this up a little bit. That ruler gets gets a little wop. There we go. Right through, and go back to the vanishing point here through this point. Okay, there, through this point, back to the vanishing point, through this point, back to the vanishing point there. Okay, good. From this point, back to the vanishing point. Let's stop a little bit. Doing, looks like we're doing okay here. From this point, back to the V, ooh, back to the VP. We barely see it emerging through there, barely. I'm make sure I gotta really, really clarify that. That's gonna be tight, okay? From this point, over. From this point, over. From this point, over. From here. You can make sure you really take the time to see this. This is what perspective, the importance of perspective. See that? We don't see that. That comes, well, no, we, well, just barely, but I'll leave it. Perspective and structure. Very important as they work together. Okay, and that would come down to there, and I think we ended there, so that would be, that falls along the same line. There we go. Okay, we're ready. Now we're ready to, to tighten this up and show our depth. So, let's start on this side. We have this. This comes over, right? We'll strengthen in our convergence lines, our depth, and stop where it meets the back wall, and look at that, we've got our first depth. Now, next thing we need is this angle coming in. It angles in, comes down this way, doesn't it? It will be about right there. And we'll stop where it disappears underneath that line. Okay, we don't see this line horizontally coming across, so we'll bring this vertical down. We'll bring this over, stop it at the end of the back of the compactor wall here to here. Because that's gonna give us some nice negative space to work with. All right, so I'm gonna refresh this angle, darken it in, which is the same angle as here. So line those up best you can, eyeball it. Stop right there, it'll end right there. We'll see this angle too, right here, okay? It's all about visualizing now, visualizing the perspective that you just drew. Because now we're making depth here. I'm gonna stop here, draw back, Darken that into there. Now I'm pushing down harder so you can see it. You can probably hear it. Crunchy. This is one of the few times I don't use a lot of paper underneath my drawing board. Um, just to make it a little harder edged. So right in here we stop. And give a little crisper line. So it makes that crunchy noise. Okay, now we want to bring that angle and we stop right there. Can you see it? Right there. That's where we want to stop. Bring that in, okay, and over to there, all right? Okay, these go all the way over. So we've got this, this uh, diagonal coming down. We wanna bring it to there, okay, to there. Stop where it meets that line, darken that line, and this is where it gets a little tough because it's roughly at eye level. Now we gotta bring this vertical, this, excuse me, horizontal, all the way over. So we wanna bring it where they meet up right to there, 
<clears throat> right through there and down. Got that. And see how we're lined up on the back wall there? And then we want to take this down at an angle to our convergence line. Now, lastly, we need this angle. We need to reproduce this angle to here. So it's the same angle in our composition. Just going to bring it over, tighten it up and in to right about there. And then darken it in where it hits that corner right there. Bingo. And then we'll come just down right through there. Okay. Now later on I'm going to crop this composition out a little bit so we, we won't see that, but we I needed that extra space. We're also we're going to make this about 12 by 16 inches, but I didn't tell you that in the beginning because I didn't want you to worry about it. Okay, so we've got that, that side in depth. So I think this is the hardest stuff of the actual drawing. We're almost, we're almost done. Hallelujah. Okay, so now we want to come over here and we want to do the same thing. Now remember, we've got to end it along this back wall here, here, and here. All right, so from this point, we want to come all the way over, line that up to there. Make sure we line it up nice and neat. There to there, then down, right? Nope, not down. Angled, right? I messed that up. So come over, make sure we get our angle. That's tough to get, right? See if you can guesstimate. Best you can, maybe about right there ish. Okay. Then we want to line that up. So we have that coming in. This will come over like so. Okay. And this will come in now. So we're, how far in do we want to go? Right to here. Down, 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 over. And then over to there. Right in through there. We'll stop. We'll line this. And we'll draw. Okay. So now we're going to go vertical down. This is going to go vertical down. I'll just draw it a little bit in because I want to make sure that I get this over. So that comes down vertical. Then I've got to find this diagonal. We won't, we won't see this here, right? So we're going to have to draw it through here. This is a little tricky. We'll come back over and go all the way to the end of our wall. I'll show you what I mean. Here to there. Right to there. We won't see that diagonal as it comes on in. Okay? Then we're going to come back at our angle here, right? So I could bring that measurement down. This gets a little tricky. Here to here, roughly, just to help me as a guide. Right in through there, okay? There's our angle, maybe in just a little bit longer, just a little bit. It'll connect up to here now. There we go, right to there. Okay, now we're on our way. Now we wanna bring in this horizontal over, way back in perspective along that back wall to there, okay? Right through there. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to connect up here to here. There we go, right through there. Now we want to bring this vertical down. So we have it here, lined it up. I'm just going to guide it down. There's our vertical, right through there. Okay, we have our vertical. Now this gets a little tricky. We want to stop here because we see a little bit of this sliver. This is one that's going to be the toughest one in through here. All right, so it angles in through here. I'm going to actually draw this one first. See this from this point here over because it's going to touch the back of the that back wall. That, it's going to touch the back wall actually. That's what we want there. There, okay, and I'll come back in like so. Okay, line that up about right there. Okay, right in through there and then I'll darken this in. Right through there. All right. Okay. Now, for the hard stuff, we've got to recreate this angle over to here. So it comes all the way over and lines right to there. This point, this is a tough one. That's why you got to keep your pencil ultra, ultra sharp. Let me darken it in so you'll see it even further. There we go. So we've got just a sliver of that. And that's tough to get unless you know enough about perspective. All right. So, We've got this angle to that angle. We need to come in, right? So we want to come in, okay, to there roughly, which meets up to there and down. We start to see that cleanly. 
So, no, not that, not this way. Whoops, messed that up. Let me get that out of there. Darken this in, do here, okay, and over, there we go. All right, so from here we'll darken to there, there we go. Okay, now we wanna come down through here, line these up, I'm just gonna strike another line all the way through so we can see it a little bit better. Right there, actually, okay. So we come down to here, Get these nice and clean in through here. Come down to there. Okay. Now we want to come over. Meet up here. To there. Right. Okay. Now we've got that pesky diagonal. Let me get that in a little bit cleaner. Right there. Okay. There we go. That second dark line right there. there. Now we've got this pesky diagonal here. This long one. Okay. That's gonna meet up right there. So there to there. Look at that. That will fit in with the other side. And we have it here, over. And then we need to come down, right? So from here we see, bring that angle in. We can line up our angles right here, roughly. And then we wanna connect them over. Come down a little bit further, it looks like. Yeah, there we go. Okay, line that up, line that up there. Now we're cooking. This comes over. We don't see that because it's slightly underneath. We come down, we're almost there, I promise. Promise, right in through there, we come down. There we are, right through there. Tighten this line up, darken it in, right in through here. There we go. We've got that diagonal to come over through. Here, right, where do we find it? We'll just bring the angle over. Bring it over through. It should come to the back wall a little bit more. There we go. That's it, to there. And that's our last one. Woo, hallelujah. All right, to there. And we'll darken that in. So, look what we've wrought. Look what you've done now. You've created a death compactor. Good for you. All right. And we're going to leave these in. We'll give a little, leave a little bit of open space up and through there. Our characters will all be down and through there. Okay, fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, our, our picture plane a little bit uh, darker so you can uh, see that. I'll do that in uh, my Sharpie. Uh, where did I put my Sharpie? Oop, it's over here on the other side of the table. All right, so now I've got it. And so that way we can see where these were cut off in our picture plane, where they won't make it in our final uh, drawing. So let's see. It's, it's there, and I'll line up to there. There we go. We have that, and we'll come down. Let me use my other, other ruler. <clears throat> and through here. Okay, so we, we can see, you see we need that extra negative space in through here. I'm going to cut this off a little bit. See where this, this is and this is in through here? I'm going to cut that off a little bit, this little extra space. I'm going to cut it off a little bit underneath where that vertical comes down. About right there looks pretty cool to me. And it's just a design issue. You can do yours any way you want. Right in through there, right in through there and over. We'll clean all that up later. Because the point is to take this, once I get this done, is to take it into, this, into the Cintiq, scan it, take it into the Cintiq, and add uh, uh, our figures and our characters to that. All right, so now we have our picture plane border, and we're ready to go here in terms of how we want to build our space further. All right, so the next thing I want to do is, and remember, we cut off a little bit there. Next thing I want to do is create now this little open type, this little arched kind of ceiling area, the top of the compactor. So let's do that really quickly. So, and it's just an arbitrary design problem. I'll just have some fun with it. So we're going to build up from this edge of thickness here, and I'm just going to draw an angle up 
this way, as, hard, as, as high as I, I want. And I'm going to do the same thing here, about the same angle. With they, they could, you could draw a triangle up here if you wanted to. Just extra line work, but I'm just going to approximate the length, maybe like almost an inch and almost an inch in through here, something like that. Then I'm going to connect them by a, a horizontal line right in through there. There we go. Horizontal line through there. Right. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to angle it a little bit further this way from this point to that point. Try to recreate the same angle on the other side from this point to that point. We're going to bring this down to there, and then I'm going to connect kind of over where they made this could go a little bit higher in my sketch to get yours a little more accurate. Then I can draw vertical, excuse me, horizontal. Yep, horizontal across. All right, and then to project some depth, we just use the vanishing point. So from the one point vanishing point through each point here, and I'm just going to draw convergence lines from here up and here up. Okay. Line it up, come over from here, up, and then one more to do from there up. We're good to go. We're golden. There we go. So now we have that angled kind of cool octagonal-like structure in through there. Of course, you could keep going if you want. Maybe I'll do one more. How about we do one more? Maybe it goes up like that, up like that. Same kind of angle here, just for fun. Bring the, the horizontal Earl over, stop make a little point, and then through the vanishing point, we come through, right to there, come on through here, right to there again, and there we have a little extra. You could you could keep going if you want, but that's, that's more than enough. I wanna get through. Now, a couple things I wanna show you as we move on now. Congratulations, you're, we're getting even closer to getting it uh, finished out, and we can add characters into it. Okay, so the next step is to bring our door into our composition. Now, from our eye level, which is also our horizon line in this case, which they don't always meet up, is also our water line. And from the back of the compactor floor there, right here, okay, we see that to there. Here's the back, here's the back where the thickness is, right through there, okay. That is, um, from here to here, that is going to be four feet, okay. So I'm going to make a light line, because I'm going to do it in color in a minute right there, that's gonna be four feet tall. Okay, so that's four feet. Now we wanna put a door up here, and uh, I wanna make the door about seven feet tall, because uh, most people put, could pass through that except for Chewbacca, he would have to lean over. So <clears throat> we wanna make the door kind of uh, tall and arched, I'll show you what it's gonna look like. It's gonna get, look roughly like this, okay? So it's gonna be an arched kind of door, I think that's what I remember I saw in the film when I reviewed it a little bit. Okay, we've got that. So I'm going to make it centered, and I'm going to put it about, oh, not quite an inch, inch over, about that wide, which is almost, not quite four feet. I could take this measurement, turn it, and that would be almost four feet. Now I'm just going to draw a vertical up a little bit, vertical up a little bit. So let's talk just a touch about measuring. So if this is four feet, how do I get seven feet up here? Well. I could make, each one of these could give me four increments. But that's four feet here. I could take a little scratch piece of paper, like so, with a straight edge on one end. I'll just tear it off, a little envelope over here. So this is four. I'll just mark here, and I'll mark here. You could do it on my ruler, too, but I've got it there. And so that here, that's eight feet. That's eight feet there. So seven feet falls in quarter increments about right there where I put my mark. That's seven. That's where I want the touch tip of my door to be. So that's where the curve of my lips, my partial lips, or my circle actually, because we're not in perspective, we're flat. And that's important to remember. This is not in perspective. This is flat across. That's where we want the curve of our door to be. And so it could meet up right there. And it's a little flat compared to the other side. Let me erase that off just a little bit through there. Okay, and then we could come over, get that curved over a little bit. There we go. Drawing with these pencils is like drawing with rocks. They're so 
there's a hard, he's an H pencil, and that's still not the hardest. All right, so we can bring this down. So let's bring our door down on the outside here and here, okay? Let's develop a thickness. So I'm gonna put a thickness about right here, about right there, it looks like a, maybe a half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. I'll bring that up to here, nice, nice vertical, through there, okay? And through there, okay? Right, and then make another curve right in through there and do the same thing over here. There we go, I'm gonna let those meet up. So we've got the parameters now of our arched door. We can clean that up later. Okay, now I want, I want it to go in. I want some thickness in here. So if this closes in together, it might crush this, this metal off the door if it goes in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just project from the edge of the door here and here back to the vanishing point there. Give a little depth. And I'll arbitrarily set it in pretty deep, maybe about right there. So it's a pretty thick metal structure here. So I put a little dot there and I just draw a horizontal line nice and light across there. That gives me the thickness of this door structure coming back. Okay, from there to there. Then I can draw a nice straight horizontal line up here, up here where it meets in. That comes back in perspective. It's hard to show the depth here. I can just draw it back to the vanishing point freehand. And then from this, I just do the same thing. I curve up, right? here and I'll start to flatten it and immediately really just keep keep drawing the curve it seems like it's flat but it's really not right there it's really not and I'll come through and down back to my point there and now I've got a thickness in here so you can actually sit through this this door and come through and you won't be crushed by that. All right, so we've got that. Lastly, I want to put uh, some just uh, design kind of uh, structures coming through the horizontally, and these are going to be arbitrary. You can put them anywhere you want. I'm just going to, and they're going to be flat across like so, and maybe there's going to be one here. There's just like support beams here. Maybe there's going to be one here. And I'm just, I can vary their thickness if you want. Put them anywhere you want. Here. Here, you can follow along with me, it doesn't matter. Just where they end against the back wall, that's where they end. Just for some structure there. Now we could give them a thickness later on, but I'm not right now. Just to push through a little bit here. And maybe one on each side, so they would be flat against the wall, and then maybe one there, and that'd be plenty. All right, so we've got now we've got our structure in. So the last thing I want to show you to end off here before we go to our next section is now we want to put the, give, give a little bit of measurement. It won't be that hard to find out how tall our ceiling is. And then give a little bit of measurement as to our characters. Chewbacca is going to be 7 feet 5 inches. Han Solo is 5'9", Luke is 5'6", and Leia is 5 feet. And I got that off the Star Wars database so we could, we could work with that. So how do we do that? How do we find those measurements? Well, we're going to start and we're going to use the back wall again. So remember, up from that to our eye level, right, was 4 feet. That was our mark here, from here to here. Then we made, I made a little measurement guide. That's 8 feet. We'll keep that. Okay, four and eight, I'll make a mark, that's 12. Another four is 16, right? Another four is 20. Another four feet is 24 feet. We're going along the back wall now. Another four is 28, correct? And then uh, about, we're ending it here. 28, that's about, let's say, three more. So let's say 31 feet to the end of the back wall. Up. And of course, it goes back up in depth. That's a different, slightly different dimension. So we've got 31 total feet there. So we're pretty, it's pretty high up and we're low. Remember, our eye level, our eyes are stuck at four feet. We are looking in at four feet, we're stuck here, which is also going to be the water line. So they're, you know, they're getting close to dire straits there. All right, so 
Now what we'll do is we'll project a little bit of depth and measurement of our figures and where we want them to be. Remember, Chewbacca is seven feet, five inches. So we can now find that first measurement. And once we get the measurement, just a straight line from top to bottom, then we can project him anywhere we want his character to be and have it scaled perfectly within our composition. Really simple device that we can uh, use. We're good to go there. Okay, so let's find seven feet, five inches. I want Chewbacca to be over here. So he's seven, five. Here's eight feet across. So what I'll do is just bring eight foot over to here. Seven feet, five inches probably falls. And I say probably, you can just guess to me. The top of his head will be right about right there. And his feet will be right there in the ground. Boom. So here he is at seven feet, five inches. That's Chewbacca right there. And I'm going to put a C on top of this line to say that's Chewy. That's Chewbacca right there. Okay. Now, Han Solo. Actually, we'll put Luke in first. Luke is five foot six. He's going to be more dominant. I'm going to project him more forward since he's kind of the star. Let's find five feet six. So here's four feet. Here's eight feet. In between that, six. Between four and six, five, 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 six is probably right here. So I'm going to bring that over. That's five, six to about right. Just a projection line here. So here is Luke at five feet, six inches if he was standing right. A little bit lower just for the heck of it. Right in through there. That's five feet, six right there. So there's five feet, six inches with my blue line. And that is, I'll put L-U for Luke. All right, so now we have Han Solo, which is at 5'9". So I'm going to transfer Luke over on this side. He's 5'6", remember, right there. So 5'9", here's 6 foot. 5'9 is probably a little, it's a little bit taller, obviously. Right through here, nice vertical line coming down to there. And there is, there is Han. Han is H. Right in through there. And that is our Han Solo. And then Leia is, is only five feet. So between six and four here, here's five right there in our measurement line. And we'll just bring her over. Oop, a little line through there. She's five feet right about there. And I bring a vertical line to where it touches a little bit below just to fudge it a little bit so it can be on the ground. And that is. Leia. And I'll put L-E for Leia. All right, so there we go. So now we have our complete structure with our measurements. And I'll show you how we can project these, these uh, figure points uh, forward in space. Essentially, it works like this. So I'll come over here and I'll draw on the side over here. So if we have a, a eye line and we have a center line, we have a vanishing point. Okay, and we say that <clears throat> we're coming down here. We say that this is a person right here at six feet tall. Okay, we'll come in here and here. Whoops. This is a person at six feet tall. We can project them into a line. We can make them into a line here. And then we can project them back in space or forward in space by using this little reference point as our guide here and here. So a six foot tall person now out here coming towards us would be we can control their height in perspective. The legs come down, right? And so now they're six feet tall here and they can be six feet tall back in perspective here. So it's a really powerful and easy way to control depth. Now we can take their measurements in our next lesson and we'll project them forward in space. Okay, so that's what we did. We created now your one point compactor scene. We found our eye level, which is also horizon line, the water level. Okay, we did that. And then we found our back wall. We built that in. Then we projected our wall thickness. Then we projected our flat shape of the teeth. Then we projected their depth right back to the one point vanishing point. Everything converges there in our viewpoint since we're straight parallel with the picture plane and the center line and the eye level. We're parallel to them. 
we project it up with our measurements, and then we put our figures in. So we're good to go there. All right, so I hope you got something out of it. And now comes the even more fun creative part. That was creative perspective, and now we're gonna use perspective two to put our figures into our composition, and I'll do that in the Cintiq. So what I'll do is I'll clean this up a little bit, uh, I'll scan it into the Cintiq, and the next lesson will be to add to this. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.